and it's loading. And we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. I'm Nanny Bubby. Welcome to my kitchen and welcome to Robert Schuler from Melissa. Melissa's Produce. I always want to say Melissa's Foods. Why do I want to say Melissa's Foods? Was it ever Melissa Foods? Well, because we have over 1,200 different items, both fresh and dried, everything you find in a produce company. So, um, yeah, people refer to us as a food company uh, because we just have so many products. Yes. And, you know, I was reading a little bit of a bio about you guys. And it's one of the largest companies in America, while at the same time, it is still family owned. It's not on the New York Stock Exchange, like um, US Foods or Cisco as an example. I, I think on some level, they're probably competitors. Would, are they for, as far as distribution? Well, their food service, we're really focused on retail stores. They don't do yeah. retail. They don't do any retail at all. Okay, well, there's the big difference. But though they are New York Stock Exchange companies, both of them. We're still um, a privately family company. Yes, which I love about you. And also, too, um, your website makes a big point about the fact that you started in a small little room. Um, Joe and Sharon started in a small room and started selling um, retail. And the rest is history, right? Yeah, I mean, really, it started uh, both Joe and Joe Hernandez and Sharon Hernandez, husband and wife. Mm -hmm. um, they were both selling uh, fruits and vegetables in the produce industry, came up with an idea when they moved to Los Angeles that they themselves can start a company. And sure enough, it started with um, a, a couple phones, a Cadillac, an outside warehouse, and uh, a lot of family, which still today, we, we're, we have about 50 or 60 family members that work within the company. And uh, the rest is history. It's been almost 40 years now. Oh, my gosh. And those 50 or 60 family members, those are 50 or 60 family members of Sh uh, Sharon and Joe or 50 or 60 family members who at one point other people work for them and then brought their families in. Oh, no, we, we actually have three generations of families there. But I'm just talking about in relation to Joe and Sharon, um, you know, <laughs> over the that. years, kid, the, 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 well, the if kids you know them, kids and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you know uh, them, you know. Cousins. Yeah, if you know them, you know how easily that happens. While we're here, I just want to say hello to everyone who has joined us. Lene is here. Judy Woods is here. Of course, our uh, lovely Tasha and Pal is here, who is going to be on the uh, show with us on Monday doing a pink pineapple carpaccio. Um, Judy Woods, Heather Glussman is here. Hello, Frank is here. Poor Frank. Frank has COVID. He's really struggling. So we're sending, I wish you were close enough to send chicken soup to Frankie. And I just hope you're okay. Debbie Sherman Gold is here. So Everybody is anxious to find out who won. But before we talk about who won, and we have over, I, let's see, just think about what two numbers you're going to choose. We have between one and um, 118. So we had 118 entries. And um, so if you would uh, just, I mean, you don't have to think about it now, but that's what we're between one and 118. Um, and let's talk about, so two things. Right here is the yellow dragon fruit. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna eat it for all of you. So, so a lot of my VIPs, I don't know what it is. I get the biggest kick out of this, but they're always say to me, taste it, Marla. T tell us what it tastes like. So we did a uh, holiday gather on December 14th and uh, I made six different dishes and everybody was like will you taste that tell us what that tastes like it's so cute so because Robert um, said that this um, is his number one very favorite fruit in the world mm -hmm. like this is your top fruit I cannot wait to taste this for everybody but before I do I showed this yesterday just in case any of you missed it this is my tropical, I got this yesterday. 
so that I could show this to you. Look at how beautiful this is. I know that little pineapple keeps sliding. Whoa, keeps sliding all over the place. Sorry. Box is heavy. So can you see that? Is that a good view? We put the pineapple back where it was, this and the, the Ojai tangerine. Is that a good view? Can you see that okay? <laughs> it keeps falling around. Yeah, what's so interesting about that, it's it's hard to duplicate this facet because you've got about a dozen different uh, tropical and exotic fruits there mm -hmm. that represent over eight different countries that they come from, whether it's South Af Africa, Mexico, um, uh, uh, Ecuador, uh, even some of the products are domestic, uh, coming from Florida, coming from California. I also see the baby bananas that come from Ecuador. So um, there's a, a whole global assortment of some of the best produce from each of those countries. That's probably why it's your very best seller. So these are the little baby bananas. And I love the baby pineapple. I mean, this is so cute, isn't those it? Those are from South Africa. Oh, are they? Yes. Love that. And the thing is, is that you can be selfish with it. You don't have to share. You uh, grab it from the, from the top down, you hold it, you cut all the way around it and you eat it like a popsicle. That's how you eat the South African baby pineapples. Like this? But, yes, after you cut off the skin, the, the core is completely edible. Oh, 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 okay. So let me ask you this. What is, because I need to know this because I just want to give everybody a little preemption. Tasha Ann and I are going to be doing this pink pineapple. So look at how beautiful this came. And what I love about this is look at how, well, that only shows the yellow side, but look at the inside is packed in pink. Look at that. So I think that, that is just really lovely. These boxes yeah. are a little bit hard to, to show. They're and what's so special about these pink pine, pineapples uh -huh. is that they're no, no, they're not just the newest fruit to the United States, right. just introduced over a year and a, almost two years ago. They are actually the rarest fruit. And really, you can only find it online at melissas.com to get yourself one. Be one of the yes. few to try a pink pineapple. And guess what? Right before Valentine's Day, we're going to be giving away two to our viewers, right? We just decided that. But so here you can see it. I've cleared the space. Here's the pink pineapple. You can see it's got the pink top. This side is pink, the yellow for pineapple. And I'm just going to pull this out. What looks yeah. like a regular pineapple on the outside without the top, when you cut it open, it's pink on the inside. Which I'm not going to cut it open today because I'm going to be using it. Um, Actually, you know what? I know, hey, Robert, just because you and I talked about this and I said I only needed one for Channel 8, but I think I need two. And the, here's the reason why. I want to explain because it is the rarest and the newest and only available with you. I want to explain why there's no top. And I think that's a really important piece of information. And I'm going to just explain it one more time to those people who are viewing right now, which is... The top is regenerative. So since this is so rare, they cut the tops off and they replant the tops, which grow more pineapple, turn into a bush. So anyway, that's why there's no tops on these. I forgot about that, but there you go. And they come just housed so beautifully and insulated. Um, so there you go. Okay, and let's see, everybody is here. Let me see just some of the things that everybody was saying. Um, ah, let me see. I can't get to where everybody was talking. Hmm. There we go. Well, unfortunately, I can't see any of the comments right now. I don't know why, but um, let me try one more thing. There we go. Uh, Jerry Williams is here. Um, and then I can't see anything else. Well, we'll figure it out. Jerry, do you know Jerry? Do you know him or her? Um, okay. Okay. You do know JB. Okay. She says, hello. Is it a she or he? Um, what do you know? JB Williams. Oh, no, 
I'm sorry. Okay, me either, but he says hello, everyone. So that's good. Uh, Joanne is here. Teresa Anderson is here. Okay. All right. So everybody's showing up. Everybody's finding us. We're getting ready. We had 118 entries. So we're getting ready to pick those. But first, since this is your favorite, it is up down here, putting this up over here. Look at this little pamphlet that comes in this. This is really beautiful too. That comes in the package for the pink pineapple. So I love that. Very it makes okay. it official that you're one of the few who have ever, ever tried a pink pineapple since less than a quarter of 1% have ever tried it. That is how hard it is to find. Yes, that is amazing. We feel very fortunate and uh, really tune in on Monday. Tosh and I are going to be making pink pineapple carpaccio with cardamom and cinnamon and stand by for this edible gold. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, so we are going to cut off both ends. I'm going to stand up. Let me get rid of this chair here. So uh, you can see on one of the ends, Marla, if you hold it up, uh -huh. It is actually the dragon, the yellow dragon fruit, as 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 are the pink dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. It is the fruit of a cactus, so you can see a little bit of the cactus on how it attaches to this flower that then pollinates and right. turns into this beautiful yellow fruit that is one of the most delicious out there in the marketplace. Well, I can't wait to try it. So I'm going to first cut this end, right? Cut up the top. Cut off the bottom. Cut off the bottom with the green, yes. There you go, okay. Now, score the skin from the top to bottom because the edible part is the white flesh with the black seeds. Right. So if you score it all the way across, it's now gonna just peel right off like a hard boiled egg. Did I do that right? Yes, but now just put your fingers in with the skin and it's gonna peel off and you're gonna just have a ball of fruit. Oh my God, that- easier yeah. than a tangerine it huh? is easier than a sumo tangerine you are correct oh my god look at that and now let me tell you when i brought these dragon fruits back from fallbrook i had no idea how to do that and so you really struggle right for no reason <laughs> okay i need and uh, now i need a, a dish towel <laughs> oh my god and it's so juicy it was juicing okay so do you have a way that you like to see this cut I like to cut them into cubes. So okay. just chop three times on one side and three times on the other side, and you're good to go. You can also cut it just like a melon. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, I like to just put it in blocks and uh, either put it in a bowl, eat it raw, or you can mix it with some other your favorite fruits uh, and berries. But we don't um, want to But these yellow dragon fruit are sweet enough. They're delicious. Other okay. dragon fruit, the pink ones, the more common ones, are very mild so they go good with some other fruits but right you know you'll see these seeds you won't taste the seeds but go ahead okay now these fruit bricks high on a refractometer like in the that 20s is. which is very sweet for a fruit yes you know what it tastes like it tastes a bit like a really really ripe honeydew but a, a but a sweetness of kiwi. Like yes, but a sweetness of kiwi, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Very unique. These ones are grown in Ecuador because they like the they don't like freezing and they don't like hot weather. So you very need temperate weather. They thrive in 70 to 90 degree weather. And uh, you know, the cactus itself is one of the most sustainable because you can eat the paddles, which mm -hmm. are green and are vegetable, but the ironic thing, the fruit, um, the, the flower turns into a fruit. So it's one of the fruit, few plants that are that sustainable where you can eat the as a fruit and a vegetable. So now let me ask you a question. They, you cannot grow the yellow dragon fruit in Fall, Fallbrook? They just haven't yet. They That's only grow right. the pink skin variety, which is both white fleshed and red fleshed. Oh. I'm sure they're going to be now knowing this information as we found this information a few uh -huh. years ago out of Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Eventually, 
will probably start growing in California. And probably, yeah. Florida. That's why we didn't have any there. Um, and also Susan Mendorf is here. So hi, Susan. Thanks for joining us. What else should I grab out of this box? So did, did somebody tell me, what did you see in this box that you'd like for me to taste and peel or um, do? You know what I really wanted to... Now, what is this called again? That is the Fijoa, which is also referred to as the pineapple guava. So... I mean, you love this. This is like your top four too, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. You it's very that? easy. All you need is a knife to cut it in half and a spoon to spoon it out. Right. And, um, you know, if you're a fan of the guava, the flavor is there. Cut it the other way. There yeah. you go. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, but it, but unlike a regular <laughs> guava, you can get a tablespoon or a regular uh, spoon and or teaspoon and well, have, uh, I, even better i have a grapefruit spoon okay and all you have to do is a circle you're going to eat the flesh not the skin the neat thing about this fruit unlike guava is the seeds are not crunchy or hard you won't even know you're tasting seeds in there um and they're absolutely delicious look how nice that came out hi Susie. thank you for being here okay so smell how fragrant it is okay Oh, wow. Yeah. What, what does that smell like? Something between a pineapple and a guava, hence the other name. Very mm -hmm. tropical. Uh, these ones are grown oh, in wow. California. And then, they're, then the other season, which starts up pretty soon, comes out of New Zealand. Well, don't kill me for saying this, but it, it smells like mint toothpaste. Oh, that's a new one. <laughs> it does. I'm sure it's delicious, but I'm just saying it's it doesn't have a smell like what you would be um, that that like what you would know. But I swear it, it smells like my toothpaste. <laughs> really? Okay. I must have a great toothpaste. Wow. Go for it. Okay, ready? Yeah, and these just like the dragon fruit. I am a really big proponent of sweet fruit. So if you love sweet fruit. That is a very sweet fruit and it breaks us in the 20s as well. Yes, but there's a tang afterwards. It right? does have a so, tang to it. Yes. So the um this is truly this yellow. Um, I really wish Cynthia was here. Somebody tag Cynthia Berman, Heather or Susie, tag Cynthia Berman so that she joins because we're talking dragon fruit. She went to the dragon fruit farm with me. Um So was the dragon fruit one of your favorites now too? Well, I don't care much for um, the dragon fruit, which is this one, even though it is the most beautiful, this yes. particular one, the white skinned dragon fruit that comes from this is so mild that I, I struggle to have flavor, but I like it in a fruit salad because it adds interest and the pineapple and the melons meld with this. So it's almost like tofu. It takes on the flavor of whatever else it's with. So from that point of view, I love it. But from a solamente point of view, not fond of it as much as this is just absolutely delicious. But I will tell you the dragon fruit that has the red meat is absolutely delicious as well. Much sweeter. Mm -hmm. the, the the regular white flesh dragon fruit and the most common is very mild, but there's a lot of people who like mild fruit. They don't like super sweet fruit. Um, right, well, it, it depends seems like you and me with, love right? sweet fruit. I like I like everything. I, I mean, I, I have an appreciation for everything. Okay, what about? Um, well, there's. I'll tell you. Here's two things. So, is this the same thing that I just opened? Yeah, that's the fojoa. Okay. And the other hand, you have a star fruit. Right. So I wanted to do the star fruit. And now these are, are these are the Ojai uh, tangerines. Are these, is that what these are? Uh, no, the Ojai pixie tangerines, they start up, uh, th they'll start up later in the season. Um, last week when I showed, or earlier this week, I showed you the key shoes from Ojai. Right. But right. that particular tangerine is one of the ones that Melissa is known for. It's called Neapolitan. They're oh. delicious. And they they are grown out of the Central Valley where a lot of citrus comes from in the Visalia, Central Valley, Fresno area. 
oh, I'm peeling. Why are these called the Neapolitan? I just so you all know, I am eating this fruit just for you. Yeah, <laughs> that, you're, gonna, the, you're gonna ask me to eat it, so I am eating it. It uh, is a tangerine mandarin cross. It's a medium-sized tangerines, and like those sumos that's, that are much larger. The season on the sumos start really soon. However, uh, these fruits, uh, the Neapolitan, they don't taste like Neapolitan ice cream, but it's because the flavor melts in your mouth. And that's why they call them Neapolitan tangerines from there Melissa's. Okay. All right, my cutting board is getting a little messy. So let's talk about this, the star fruit. I, am I gonna taste this now? Sure, um, yeah. Um, and what you, the reason why it's called a star fruit, when you cut it, the, the, the fruit is entirely edible. However, uh, Nanny Bobby, the uh, fruit is very mild in flavor. You know, we talked about mild and then really sweet. This is very mild. It's, uh, it kind of reminds me of like the watermelon rind. It doesn't have a sweet flavor. The thing is, it has a great plate presentation. It mixes well with other fruits um, and uh, just bite into the whole fruit. It's absolutely delicious, including the seeds. It has a mild watermelon to pineapple flavor to it, but it's very mild, like I said. All right, here we go. Um, Joanne says that we had a pineapple guava tree here in Southern California, which is interesting. Sue uh, Epstein is here. Hey there, Sue, how are you? Let's see, did I miss anybody? Um, nope, I think I got everybody now. Okay, ready? It's very crunchy. Mm -hmm. um, and very, it's a very hydrating fruit. What is that so, crunch like? What kind of, what kind of crunch is that? Almost like a, a cel a wet celery type crunch. <laughs> yeah, not, not quite celery though. What, I mean, you Pineapple know what, crunch? Like an apple. It's apple oh, it's crunch. crunch okay. Yes, crunch of an apple. What do you think of that? Yeah, that would work. So I've actually dipped them in chocolate. I like taking fruit, berries in particular, and dipping them in chocolate. And mm -hmm. again, it makes a great plate presentation. Oh, it does. Yeah. This is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's star fruit. <laughs> All right. What else can I find? All right. This is something I am not a fan of, the apple pear. But you say these are not apple pears. These are what? These are butterscotch pears. Right. They're a cousin of the apple pear. Uh -huh. And this is the fruit that you cut the opposite way. It's in the pear family, but has the crunch of an apple. Mm -hmm. And this is the fruit you can put on a fruit tray because it does not oxidize. Right. Okay. So. So I cut them into discs. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they have a really good crunch like an apple. Look how white that is. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? Okay. The core is completely edible along with the little seeds. And you'll notice, uh, Nanny Bobby, you probably don't like the skin of a regular Asian pear. This uh -huh. skin is extremely thin. Some people even take out the skin because they don't like the chewiness of uh, apple uh, type skin. Mm. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's mild and sweet pairs really good with a slice of cheese mm -hmm. next to it. So, For dessert. but it's the only pair you can actually cut and put on a, a fruit crudite, vegetable crudite, and a mm -hmm. charcuterie board with cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and it make and it's an elegant addition because you can cut them into the disc shape. Yes, I love that. Love that. Um, I didn't wash this fruit before I started cutting into it, I just realized, but I won't die, right? You'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to see the, the box and then I didn't even think about cutting it, uh, cleaning it. Okay. Um, which I am just like a freak about cleaning everything. So I'm really surprised I didn't think of that. Okay. Well, I think this is it. Let me just ask you this. Would you like to go ahead? Oh, I do want to make one comment about Sin Vodka. I had a lot of people DMing today um, about where they could find Sin Vodka. So there are these very, very strange rules in the state of Nevada. And as I said to Robert, back in the day when distributors were founded here in our state, 
they were all founded by the mob and they did not want you to be able to um, sell any spirits at all without them controlling everything. And those laws in Nevada, for the obvious reasons, are actually still on the book from back way back in the day. So we were going to give away a bottle of Sin Vodka yesterday, but we were unable to do so because the rules are, if you are a distributor or the distiller, and the distiller didn't get off the airplane until 20 minutes before he had to be here. But he, the rules are that you have to actually buy the vodka or whatever it is, is your brand. You have to buy it from a store in order to give it away. Isn't that crazy? So if you're the distributor or if you are the distiller, you cannot give away a bottle of vodka. You have to buy it to give it away. So that way, everybody gets a piece of your pie. If in the state of Nevada, who knows what happens in the other 50 states, but that's the rules here. Um, and also, as you heard our W tell all of you yesterday, they just started distributing through bootleggers. And there are three places, there are several bars in town that you can order Sin Vodka, but there's only three stores where you can buy it. One is Decatur Liquor, which is Decatur and Alta. Um, pardon me, <laughs> coming up on me all this fruit. Um, there is um, uh, the Stage Door Liquors on Cobalt Lane in Las Vegas Boulevard, um, where um, that it is a bar and a tavern and a gambling hall, but they you can buy liquor there and Sin is there, the best price in all of town for Sin Vodka is actually at the stage door. Um, and then uh, the South Point gift shop also sells it. So those are the three places. I can tell you if when we hang up from our call and we choose our winners, if you call, if everybody picks up the phone and calls Lee's Liquor and asks them if they have Sin Vodka, then every, you know, they just call your closest Lee's Liquor to your house Ask them if they carry Sin Vodka and chances are with all those calls in one day, they may get Sin Vodka and in Lee's Liquor and make it easier for everybody to go buy it. It really was delicious. So let's see what everybody's saying here. Um, they should deliver, she said. Um, Marcy is watching. Um, so there you go. All right. Well, pick uh, your first number anywhere between one and 118. Okay, and this is for that lovely box of exotic fruit from Melissa's. Exotic tropical fruit basket, your most uh, famous one. Yes, um, my lucky number is 21. Okay, let's see. You can see on the list, you can see the numbers. Can you see the numbers right here? I can't see them, but I'm sure that there, there. You go. there we it? go. Yeah, see the numbers? Yes. So let's see if I hold it up. If we, if we hold it up, can you read that? Whoops, wait a minute, let me get it on. Can you see, tw whoop, wait a minute, I'm, I just have to move the right way, okay. What is 20? Lynette McDonald. Lynette McDonald, okay. Lynette McDonald, you just want a tropical fruit basket, okay. She's actually a friend of mine. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> She's a foodie friend of mine um, who loves to uh, use Melissa's produce uh, with her cooking show too. So. Okay. All right. Very good. So do you have her address? Yes. Okay. Then you can send to her. That's great. Okay. And now pick another number. I think a good round number is a hundred. Okay. Oh, well, that's kind of funny too. I think we should pick one more. So do you see number a hundred? Uh, <laughs> Tasha Powell. Yeah. Another good foodie friend of mine. Exactly. I think we need to get <laughs> some of our viewers from Nanny Bubby. Do you mind giving away another one? Sure, not a problem. Okay. Pick another number. One of my friends this time. Uh, how do you know? I know that's I don't know. Funny. Okay. I 50. Apologize. 50 huh? is a nice round number. Okay. If it's not one of if it's not a nanny bubby gatherer, we're gonna have to move on. I hope so. Oh my god, this is hilarious. Okay. Don't, don't tell me it's your husband or someone. No, I don't let them enter. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Um, 
Number 50 is Lynn. Lene. Lene. Rinda. Rinda Hoge. Hoge. I mean, so I am not surprised, literally, because Lene um, it just found us from watching us on Channel 8. She comes as much as she can. And from the day we had our first contest, she has won. No matter what we're giving away, it's Lene's name who always gets chosen. And it is very random, everybody. I promise you that. So congratulations to Lene. <laughs> of course it's Lene, everybody, right? Um, so anyway, I have Lene's address, obviously. I will forward it to you. You have Tasha's. You have- um, Lene McDonald, yes. Yeah. And um, and this was really fun, everybody. So happy, Lene said. I'm so excited. Thank you. <laughs> she's a lucky winner. She so. swears she's never won anything in her life. She tells me, but I'm not sure how that's possible because <laughs> there is lucky glue coming from mine from me to her. Yes, Judy. Oh my God, she won again. Yes, go play Mega Bucks, Judy says. Everybody. Oh my God, Lene. <laughs> This one I'll never understand, but she is a lucky dog. Yes, go play Mega Bucks is right. And if you win, you have to share it with all our gatherers. Oh gosh. Well, Robert, this has been a joy. I thank you. Um, I will get those other two pink pineapples uh, for Thursday on K KLAS. Everybody, please um, join Tasha and I. On Monday, we're going to make the pink pineapple carpaccio. Um, we're using edible gold, and I received my edible gold today. I don't know the first thing about what to do with it, um, but I'm going to take a lesson, and all of you get to engage with me in that lesson, um, and I'm really excited to, to learn and see the beauty. I, I, I don't feel like I'm a good sculptor or artist. Um, I, I Based on what I've heard from Tasha, it seems like she has magical hands. Um, so I'm excited to see what she does. Um, I'm, I'm just not as talented with my hands in that capacity. I'm creative in different ways. But I thank you all for joining us. Robert, thank you for being here. Robert is up in his cabin. In what city are you in? I'm in Camp Nelson in Central yeah. Valley where the sequoia trees are. Mm, I love that part of the country. Love that part of California. Well, Thank have you. a wonderful three-day holiday. Thank you so much for interrupting your holiday to be here with us. Thank you for uh, being willing to give away the exotic tropical fruit baskets um, and also for offering to give away pink pineapples, two pink pineapples during the week, either before Valentine's Day or the week after, depending on when you get them. Um, but we will hold you to that because I know everybody is very anxious to receive theirs. Great. Okay, Robert, on the count of three, everybody together, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. Can butter. you say it, Robert? Spread love like butter. You got it. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays. Oh, I don't know how to, I'm trying. <laughs>